Um, let's kind of focus on this inductive part here. So 5.3, this idea of recursive definitions. We've done this before when we did things like what I called, remember the open form of, say, sequences. And we had something like, okay, a naught is equal to 2, but then a n is equal to 3, a n minus 1 plus 2, you know, things like that. And we had this process of, okay, so my sequence starts at 2. What would be my next number? What does this formula say? It's 3 at the previous plus 2. What's my previous? 2. So it's 3 of those plus 2. Where am I at? 8. What's the next one? What's 3 of those? Plus 2. What's 3 of those? What's 3 25s? What's 3 quarters? 75. So 3 26s would be 78 plus 2? Everybody okay with this? And then dot, dot, dot. We would go on forever. So what we had was, but if I would look at this, where I had a, I could restate this, and we use these words. This here was basis. And this here was the recursive or inductive. So the basis was your beginning elements, and then you had this formula that is the recursive or the inductive part of it, which is telling you what. If we would look back at recursion, you know, recursion, if I look at strong induction, strong induction had this whole P of the first case, and then and, we would have this for all K, P of the first and p of the second, and p of the kth implies p of the k plus first, right? We had these two components. We would call this the basis. We would call this the inductive, but we we'll also can call it or recursive step. The thing about the inductive or the recursive step, if I look at it, really what this is saying is this represents all the old values, right? The first value, the second value, the third value, the kth value implies I can make a new value based upon the old value. So what we were doing with our sequences was actually induction. We, you, you had the seed, what comes first? And then you give me a rule. How does the old stuff make new stuff? And so all of these proofs, the one I just did, right? I showed that 2 is prime. That's my basis step. Then what do I show? All of the old, if 2 is a product of primes, 3 is a product of primes, 4 is a product of prime, up to k is a product of primes, I have all of my old stuff, they're all product of primes, they can make my new one a product of primes. Why? Well, if my new one's a prime, it's a product of primes, but if it was composite, I use my old ones by multiplying them to get my new one. It tells me how to make my new one from my old one. How did I get 12? It's 2 times 6. But 2 and 6 are old stuff. Product of primes, I got my new one. I figured out my new product of primes. So induction is what we've been doing. What's the basis? How do I get new stuff from old stuff? Now, if you use immediately, if you use exactly one before this, you could call it weak induction. If you used a bunch before, you would call it 
strong induction, but in the end, it's just induction. Old stuff, new stuff. Old stuff makes new stuff. So let's take some examples. Say f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1. My basis case, my first case, actually involves two elements. And then I start off, and then I have my recursive or inductive definition. It's just simply f of n is equal to f of n1 plus f of n minus 2. Anybody recognize it? What do we call these numbers? 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 8. It's the Fibonacci numbers. In other words, we're using induction to build things. Um, let's try a different example. Let's say that I'm not building a sequence of numbers. Let's rather do it this way. Let's say that we're going to build a set. And so for my basis, I'm going to say that the number 5 is in my set. And then for my inductive, it is that if element A is in my set and element B is in my set, then element A plus B must be in my set. What's my set equal to? I tell you, if you have things that are in your set, the sum of those things are in your set. I only have one. So is five in my set? Yes. Is five in my set? Yes. So five plus five must be what? In my set. So I have to have not only five, I now have ten. Because it was five plus five. But if 10 is in my set, is 10 plus 10 in my set? Yep. But if 10 is in my set and 5 is in my set, is 5 plus 10 in my set? Yep. And so that's 15. That's 20. That's 25. And we could go through. Why? Because 10 is actually 5 plus 5. What's 15? It's actually 5 plus 10. What's 20? It's 10 plus 10. What's 25? It's 15 plus 10. There's other ways to add, just like there's other ways to multiply. Like 12, what are the factors of 12? 2 and 6, 3 and 4, right? But those rules let you go backwards and make no 3 and 6? No, nope, because we were only doing what? Oh. Addition. And so this thing, what did I, by defining it this way, what did I actually define? All the positive multiples of 5. So what are the, what are the positive multiples of 5? Start at 5 and then always... If you have an element in your set and you add it to its set, it still has closed. So addition is closed. So this form of building process is a lot of times a little more natural, right? We don't just have to build sequences of numbers. We can build sets. We can build functions. We can build anything. It really comes down to sometimes in our life, it's easier to think about what's the basic building blocks, what are the rules to come together? Now let's start building. And this is exactly what you have, for example, in linear algebra. For example, we say things like vector spaces. All right, in linear algebra, we're like, what's a vector? It's a set where you start off and say, this is here and this is here. And then I, you know, if you think of linear algebra, if you think of something as simple as, say, R2, you say things like, what's your basis? It's this vector and this vector. I say it's vector 1 and then vector 2. And then you have your inductive part or the recursive part, which is if vector 1 is in my space and vector 2 is in my set, I'm going to say that anything times vector 1 plus anything times vector 2 is still in my set. That makes a space. 
really what you've done is say you have R2 if you do Cartesian products really what you've done is you've taken all of space and gridded it out right you have one vector and the other vector and then what is it so many of this one so many of this one gets me to anywhere I want that's why it's called a space why is it called a vector space because they they fit together why do we call these things spans in linear algebra because it looks like a bridge span right it spans you have these little things that all stick together and how many of them do you need so when you say things in Cartesian coordinates I'm at position two three what do you mean I take two of these and three of these and that's where I'm at and so that's also normally when you call these particular things this is the basis step in linear algebra what do you normally call those two vectors the basis vectors why are they called the basis vectors they're the building blocks that build out what do we do we do linear combinations of them linear algebra right we build things that's all we do and so all of that stuff it's an entire branch of math built upon the concept of this one section pieces combined to make new pieces that's all we do seem rather useful ever say yes we could do a lot with this now most of the time here we're not going to eventually we're going to get to more advanced versions of if I have an open form can you get to closed form so we're going to go from recursion to non-recursion but we can do things like for example some proofs that use this sort of technique for example if you know that f0 is 0 and f1 is 1 and fn is fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 we can do things like show for all n do, do, do. if a is 1 1 1 0 that implies a to the n would be filled with the n plus first Fibonacci the nth Fibonacci the nth Fibonacci the n minus first Fibonacci so basically I'm going to use the fact that I understand I can use recursion to define new numbers but I'm going to use that formula to do a proof that's using induction this actually uses weak induction okay so obviously this is going to work for n right as we go through it and actually if I wanted to if you could define we could start off at n equals 0 if we wanted to but we'd have to define one thing at n equal to 0 that'd be f1 f0 f0 f minus 1 all right and what would be a to the 0 would be the identity right just so you know that you can actually take the Fibonacci's If this is f0 and this is f1 and this is f2 right could I go backwards hmm? where oh because I can't add I said one two <laughs> I wrote one two three and I was thinking one two three four sorry one plus one is two one plus two is three two plus three is five all right um could I go backwards if 2 plus 3 is 5 if I gave you 3 and 5 how would you find 2 5 minus 3 and then that would become 3 minus 2 is 1 2 minus 1 is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 1 minus 0 would spit out 1 and then 0 minus 1 would spit out negative 1 1 minus negative 1 would spit out 2 and then negative 1 minus 2 would spit out negative 3 2 minus negative 3 would spit out the negative indexed Fibonacci numbers are the Fibonacci numbers but with a plus minus effect kind of interesting this is still work going up what's 5 plus a negative 3 2. What's negative 3 plus 2? Negative 1. What's 2 plus a negative 1? 1. What's negative 1 plus 1? 0. So if you want to, you could always do that. We're not doing that, but just so you know. 
But in other words, how would I prove this? That's just a little note, things to remember. So how would I prove this? If I want to prove this, what's the basis? What's P of the first case? What is the smallest power that I can talk about? What's the smallest power that I can talk about on this problem? The problem is that if I do plug in a zero, this becomes what? If I plug in a zero, that's a zero. Whoops. That's f of one. That's a zero. That's a zero. But this is a minus one, and that's not normally defined. On the other hand, I could, because what is f of minus one? One. And so what would I have? What's f of one? One, zero, zero, one. It is the identity. Is a to the zero the identity? Yes. Is it the identity? It's the identity, so it actually does work. But that assumes that we've all defined f of minus 1. Is that in the textbook? Everybody say no. We can, we can extend it and think about it, but for us, um, if we want to stay strictly to what the textbook is talking about, then we have to talk about simply n equals 1. And what do I want to show? I want to show that a to the 1 power is equal to f of 2, f of 1, f of 1, f of 0. But what is a to the 1 power? That is 1, 1, 1, 0. That's a, right? What's f of 2? What's f2? 1. What's f1? 1, 1. What's f0? 0. zero. Are those equal? True. It actually works for F0 if we define and keep going backwards. But yeah. That would make it really interesting is what does the negative exponent mean? Just so you know, is there such a thing as a negative exponent for matrices? No. It would make it really odd if I would allow that and if I defined it as Fibonacci. I'd be like, that's weird, but we're not going to do that. It actually kind of gets to a part of math where if we look at it and say, well, it doesn't make sense, let's skip it. But if it shows up again tomorrow, and it shows up the next day, and it shows up the next day, and it shows up the next day, and you keep skipping it because it doesn't seem to make sense, you might want to say, time out. I wonder if I need to rethink my math. I need to say that square root of a negative number needs to exist. Why? Because it shows up every day I do my algebra. So <clears throat> what do I do, right? Accept it and move on, right? You try to do those sorts of things. So sometimes it's enough to say, eh, who cares? That's a common technique in math, too. Made my head hurt, skip it. Other times it's made my head hurt five days in a row. I better understand it. All right, so what's the inductive? The inductive part is we are going to assume P of the kth, which is we're going to assume that A to the K does indeed equal FK plus 1, FK, FK, FK minus 1. We just, this, this equality is true. We assume that. And here's my point. I have to show P of the K plus first. But that is a to the k plus 1 needs to be equal to what? That'd be f of k plus 2. That'd be f of k plus 1. That'd be f of k plus 1. That would be f of k. We're assuming that this equality here, let's make it nice and bold blue, we assume that that equality is true. We're asking is this equality true? What two techniques can you use? Take your first equality, mess with it until the second one shows up, or use expressions. Take the left. That was supposed to look like an A. Take the left, use this equality until the right shows up. Either one will work. Honestly, they're both going to have the same big thing. What is, let's do that one. What is a to the k plus 1? That's just simply what? 
a to the k times a. What is a to the k? That's f k plus 1, f k, f k, f k minus 1. What's a? 1, 1, 1, 0. If you multiply these, do your normal matrix multiplication, and use the fact that if you add two neighbor Fibonacci's, the next shows up, right? If I, get, if I have a Fibonacci plus a Fibonacci and they're right beside each other, what happens? Next Fibonacci, right? If you use that fact, this will be, with algebra, that. You just have to